Hello and we welcome to week seven in artificial intelligence. This week we're going to be talking about probabilistic reasoning over time and probabilistic programming. We'll jump right in with a discussion of the assignments though. Um, and as I said, uh, we're into week seven. So with week seven, uh, you have a project due which relates to planning and we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, a look ahead uh, in week eight, you've got a paper where we talk about decisions. Then in week 11, a paper where you're going to talk about deep learning frameworks. I would not underestimate any of these assignments. They are a significant amount of effort. So you may want to plan accordingly. So jumping straight into planning and the project that relates to planning. Um, so select the topic of personal interest to you. Um, you feel free to have fun with the topic. Uh, feel free to use libraries, tools, and other code as a starting point. Uh, so don't feel as though you're encumbered by what you can, can do to start with. Just be sure that if you reuse something, make sure you don't reuse too much of it. Uh, and make sure a key way to avoid any kind of issues is to make sure that you're citing or giving reference to those sources which you're using. So do make sure that you're, you're telling me where you get things from, if you're getting them from somewhere. If you're writing it all from scratch, uh, congratulations. Uh, it's an awful lot of work. So maybe you want to think about something a little simpler. Uh, you want to use something like Anaconda and, and Jupyter Notebooks, or you, you can use Azure Databricks Community Edition if you're so inclined. Uh, Anaconda and Jupyter might be simpler. Just keep that in mind. Uh, you need to propose a planning topic, and hopefully you've already done so before this, uh, but uh, you need to plan it or propose it uh, and then receive approval. And you make sure you document that as part of your effort uh, for 10% of your grade. So you start off with 10% just by having come up with the idea that you want to do and getting me to say, sure. Uh, implement that approved topic inside of Python. Uh, again, 40% there. And then the overall document uh, is 50%. And so that's kind of, to some extent, almost uh, uh, a greater percentage than that if you consider the 10% for the planning. Also, that should be evenly split amongst those four domains, so 12.5% a piece. Uh, so uh, me being a math guy, 50% uh, is obviously 10 and 10 and 10, right? So there are four tens there. Anyway, moving on. Uh, jumping into the discussion for this week, choose a topic that's related to this week's reading, uh, define and describe, uh, and provide a real world example of that topic. And then moving on, uh, as always, these are some useful references for this course. Uh, these are associated with the textbook that we've been using. So feel free to take a look there. And you may also want to take a look there because there's an awful lot of source code. Uh, and you might even find something perhaps that relates uh, to planning. Um, moving into probabilistic reasoning over time, which is chapter 14. Uh, we start off with the, the, the discussion of time and uncertainty. So your basic idea here is that it's not a static world in which we live. Things change over time. Uh, and you need to be able to keep track of what's changing. You also need to be able to predict what's going to change. This is true in the real world as it is if you are a person or if you happen to be some sort of autonomous agent. So uh, you can't just assume that the way things were is the way they'll be forever, right? So uh, you basically need to state, save some state uh, and the evidence variables for each time step and however granular you're making that time set. So X of T is a set of unobservable state variables at time T. Um, and so the, they may be things like your, your blood sugar at time T, uh, which will change over time, depending upon if you're exercising, eating, sleeping, or whatever. Uh, evidence sub T, so E sub T, is something you can actually observe. That is the evidence of the variable at time T. So you have an unobservable thing that is the state, the true thing that you're interested in. That's, that's X. Uh, and you have some way that you can actually have evidence that tells you what you think that might be. So that's, that's what evidence is, evidence sub T. So measured blood sugar, uh, it should be hopefully an indication of what your actual blood sugar is at the same, uh, L, the same values for T. And this is screen, assumes discrete time steps uh, and it basically uh, the, the discrete time and the, the size of the step depends upon uh, the problem uh, notation. So basically the idea here is that uh, you should have uh, evidence from one to three that corresponds roughly to X at those same sort of units. Uh, and you're going from A to B, uh, which um, maybe one to three. Uh, so you're going to start from uh, 
end at uh, b, you're going to before b is b minus one and b minus two and so on, assuming that you're you're large enough that you're not getting back into zero. So that's the basic idea of of capturing that information. Uh, this goes to the discussion of of Markov processes and Markov chains. I'm not going to go into this in much detail. Understand they are a thing. Understand that it's a way of dealing with uh, things over time. Uh, and that it, it is something that you, you probably may want to spend some time uh, reading, especially if it's of interest to you. I'm not going to drain this. I'm not really even going to talk about it much, but uh, do do the reading, do get some sense of what it's about. Again, we're in a survey course here. We're not doing a lot of low level uh, mathematical proofs and so on of this topic. There's, there's so many things in this course to talk about. We have to move pretty quickly. Um, and this is basically going through a similar sort of a Bayesian network structure talking about uh, uh, the dependency uh, distribution, conditional dependency distribution based upon uh, an umbrella world of if it's raining or not, if you should be using an umbrella based upon th the rain. And uh, you get t minus one, t, uh, and then t plus one. It's a little grainy. Hopefully you can make it out. And then moving back to, again, we're talking about probabilistic reasoning over time in chapter 14, moving back down into the next section, which is inference uh, in temporal models. Uh, so you basically got some inferencing tasks and there's essentially four of them, uh, I believe uh, that, you, that you'll talk about in a read in the reading. Uh, you're gonna be doing some filtering, some prediction, some smoothing and the most likely explanation. Uh, and that's where, um, the, the some of these filtering is is uh, the background there's coming from signal processing so it's a little bit of a, a, um, a misnomer in the name but it's about determining essentially uh, the a belief state based upon input right um, then prediction is kind of what you would think it would be you're uh, you're like filtering but without evidence you're guessing what it's going to be to some extent guessing is probably not the right word um, and your smoothing is going to be around better estimating of past states and that you need that a lot of times for learning. Uh, and like I said, least uh, the most likely explanation is around what probably is the most likely answer to the problem. Uh, digging into these uh, filtering, uh, it's essentially a recursive state algorithm. Again, not going to go over this in much detail. If you're really interested, feel free to dig in. But the basic idea is what I described just a moment ago. Smoothing, again, uh, you got a, a Markov process here with uh, some time events and evidence and uh, some some values. Uh, and they, again, not gonna drill into it much depth. And then moving into most likely explanation. Uh, so the basic idea is the most likely path to reach X of T plus one. Uh, is the most likely path to reach some x of t plus one more step. So it's it's kind of what you would expect and it's relatively straightforward. Moving on to hidden Markov models, again, gonna just skim right over this. Um, there, uh, it's around, uh, again, temporal uh, processing and this concept of a, of a domain of x sub t uh, and there's evidence of t usually um, and you're uh, going from one to S, um, which is the things that are in the domain of X sub T and basically transition matrix and a few other things, but again, not gonna drain it. So be familiar that that is associated with probabilistic reasoning over time when you need to know more about it. The same thing with these common filters, you're gonna drill into it if you need to know it. I'm basically painting the scenery for you so that you know what's where. Uh, and the column of filters, it's a, a way of describing continuous variables. It's similar uh, to the Markov processes, but more around continuous and you're dealing with Gaussian distributions. You will talk about those more somewhat later on. Um, and basically it's, it's keeping track of things uh, usually in some sort of a noisy sort of environment. Been around for quite some time as well. Uh, dynamic Bayesian networks. Not going to talk about this much. Uh, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly, but it's uh, basically the idea is that there are Bayesian <laughs> networks that change over time since the dynamic, and potentially the uh, the structure um, uh, 
could potentially change on you and, and we're, you're going to want to try to avoid it if you can, but it, it may happen, hence the dynamic nature. Uh, and you're going to do, there's, there's mechanisms where you can do exact inference, which is generally speaking very expensive. Instead, uh, you're going to be doing some sort of approximation of the exact uh, distribution. Um, and then you get into this concept of dynamic Bayesian networks a little further. Uh, this is looking at the example of that, that rain world showing uh, the relationships with the, the transition models. Um, and most of these things, you'll find courses on each one of these topics if you were to really want to go into this. So if you want to get a master's in artificial intelligence, you would be taking a course on most likely each one of these chapters, maybe even each one of these sections in these chapters in certain circumstances. So uh, comparing the, the filters to uh, the dynamic Bayesian networks, and then there's this concept of unrolling it uh, to handle the observations over time. And then particle filtering uh, and again, it's a, an approximate solution as, as we, I talked a little bit briefly about is that generally speaking, whenever you're talking about getting the exact value for something, it's, it's pretty expensive. So instead we come up with ways of doing uh, representations that are close and close enough is the idea. Again, we're skimming over this stuff pretty quickly as you probably should whenever you're, you're doing your reading and so on. Uh, make sure that you have a, enough of a concept so that you can speak to what the topic is about. That's all we're really interested in. Not so much the details of how you're going to do it. Um, unless it's a, an interesting area for you. So I'm keeping these things very high level, um, primarily because uh, I don't, I don't want to bore you to death. Uh, probabilistic programming, kind of an interesting topic. Um, uh, so the the idea here is that you have this concept of um, uh, the we start off with a relational probability model, kind of similar to what databases are like, uh, but uh, in a closed world or uh, model, you assume that everything you don't know is false, um, and it makes life a whole lot easier that way. The there's some challenges with that. Um, and this goes through the concept of filtering through it. Um, and uh, basically the, the representation of using that sort of a modeling approach whenever you're talking about uh, a, a domain of book authors and, and so on. Um, and the, the concept of if you don't know something, then you, you assume it's, it's not really there. So then, but we, we generally speaking, we can't operate in a, a closed universe world, which is what the database and the, or the relational and the database sort of models are doing. You're, you live in a world where you, there's things that you may not know about and you can't always make assumptions about them uh, being false. And in this case, we, there's a, an entire domain around open universe semantics and open universe models. Again, you could literally take a course on this topic. Uh, so uh, we're going to stay very high level. The part of it that is interesting, though, is that uh, the, the auth one of the authors of the textbook created a, a language um, based upon Bayesian logic uh, programming uh, to do probabilistic modeling, essentially. And part of one of the things they did with that was use it to uh, measure seismic information uh, and determine if uh, people were in compliance with the nuclear arms treaties uh, because we're, we're not supposed to be setting off nuclear weapons anywhere anymore, although there are some countries that continue to do so. Um, so he took this language blog, interesting sort of choice, um, and um, basically implemented a model that very quickly became better than what had previously been used. And now they're currently using it. They've adopted it. So this basically goes through some of the semantics of it. But the key concept here is that you don't just assume that if you don't know something, it's false. Uh, rather, there's some controlled approaches to it. Um, and so that you have some uh, probabilities associated with it um, of a, a inside of your world uh, that, that are, is beyond assuming that it's, it's just not there. Um, here's an example of it. To, uh, uh, talking about citation information, there was another usage that um, 
the one of the authors had talked about. Basically, he had created a apologies, I had paused to sneeze. Um, he had recorded or he had uh, went in and took a look at uh, something that basically tracked um, citations and publications and looked up himself, which sometimes we'll do, right? We'll see what all people know about us. And it came back that he had written hundreds of books with a particular uh, author or in, in general, and he, he had written like, you know, four. Uh, so that got him interested in this domain as well, which deals with kind of the probabilistic reasoning around um, the authors of books and some uh, some probabilities and distributions associated with it as well. So the idea here is that you're basically writing programs that handle probabilities. And you can actually do it with a domain specific language like blog, or you can write it with uh, uh, traditional programming languages um, uh, like we typically use. So uh, the last section here we're gonna talk about is keeping track of complex world. We've talked about how data changes and moves and things keep happening. The universe doesn't stop, the world doesn't stop, things move. So one of the, uh, an example to talk about is, is radar and keeping track of planes and flight. As you, you, you may know, uh, radar is done by having basically a thing that spins, right? And that's sending out signals and then it's retrieving, capturing or listening for the bounces that come back. And based upon that, it can determine roughly where an aircraft is. They've gotten very advanced. They know roughly what the altitudes are um, and so on. But the whenever you're looking at a series of points, which is what you're seeing here in box A, uh, if you if you look at this as time across here, uh, going across the horizon, uh, you've got a bit a blip there at at points one. Uh, that is basically two things come back, and so you you assume that there is essentially two things in flight at that particular location. And this is looking at a particular location at at a point in time, and you move time across the axis, and then you you hit it again. Um, so we've moved it forward enough for probably a rotation or whatever of the radar. And you see now that point two is the readings of, uh, of the, the aircraft or whatever we're hitting and three and so on and four and, and five. So you've essentially got T sub one through five here. And if you look at it, you, you may be trying to figure out, well, how do you make sense of all that? Right? Because is it, you've got essentially two, um, to three different interpretations of it, right? One is um, in box B, where a plane looks like it's coming down to land or something, right? So you've got a line from from the, the top one to the top two to the top three, then to the bottom four to the five. So it's coming down. It looks like A, uh, the this the line below it is something maybe taking off and going up. Uh, that's, that's one possibility, um, but it could be something entirely different so that you have, uh, potentially uh, a false alarm. So maybe three wasn't a true reading uh, or, uh, you know, could be that it really wasn't there. Or uh, perhaps uh, you're, you're looking at C, right? Which is there's two planes, one's going up, one's coming down, one's took a dip and so on. Uh, the point of all this is that you've got some significant issues in this world, right? Because you don't want two planes flying into each other and you need to know where they're at. And you kind of need to know which plane is which, but you've got a, a certain amount of limited data that's associated with it. So this kind of hints at some of the challenges that you may face whenever you're dealing with this. And you're, you're essentially going to formulate a hypothesis for uh, each one of the possible combinations of these things and figure out the most likely scenario. That's the way you would address this. And so with that, we wrap up our, our brief discussions of chapters 14 and 15. Uh, with that, I'll close with questions. Uh, if you have any questions about this topic, if it's something that you want to learn more about, if it's something that's really interesting to you, let me know. Uh, I'll assist you as I can uh, and identify some additional resources for you to take a look with, uh, take a look at. Uh, as always, stay safe, uh, and I'll speak with you next week.